So kind of going back to the very first example that Mrs. Hokeraby helped me kind of work through, we're going to try to do the same idea. We're going to work through an algebraic equation. That's easy, no big deal. But on the on one side, we're going to provide the reason, the description of what we do. Instead of writing out in words, lengthy description, we're going to use some of the acronyms and properties that we just learned. Is Love that cool? It. Yes. All right. So notice one thing, and I kind of did this on the very first slide. Notice how I, I, I went ahead and put a little kind of segment bar to separate. This is where I'm going to put my work, and then this is where I'm going to put my reason. And I'm going to put it kind of right next to each step. Okay. This is a good way to organize, and this is also a good lead into when we start doing geometric proofs. This is this right now is a algebraic proof. So, so we're it'll doing be, yeah, it'll be the same format. It'll just and yeah, it's a real nice, a convenient um, organization tool. All right. So one thing that I'm going to add to this problem before we get going is, and we talked about this the last um, last section um, in a couple days ago or a couple days ago we have to start somewhere and so why do we know this well our reason is we were just given this given is always my first initial reason okay because you have to be given something makes so sense. that's easy if you forget that that's an issue so make sure you remember you'll get that. used to it yeah. though we'll do it all the time all right so first step talk me through this first step what would you do all right I want to get all the variables to one side so I would subtract my 3x from both sides now, do so, you have to do that? I don't need to show the work. I just need to write down what the next step would be. Okay. So I'm still going to have my 12, and it's going to equal a 5x minus 18. Now, when you are subtracting 3x on each side, now that's one way to do this. You could actually subtract 3x or 8x on each side. You could... Um, deal with these. It, we know out solving an there's algebraic multiple equation, ways there's I could do it. So if I subtract... 3x on each side. Then I used SPO. We're going to use SPO. Now, next step. All right, next step, if I've got all the variables to the right side, I need to get all the constants to the left. So I'm going to add an 18 to both sides. And again, you don't have to show that. Don't need if to show you it. You have to do that, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to write just that 30 will equal the 5x. And because I know I added the both sides, I'm going to use APO as my reason. And notice how it's lined up. After, after I did the step, I immediately write down my reason. After I did the step, immediately write the reason. I know you guys get in the habit of just solving this and going back and writing the reasons. That sometimes ends up taking more time because you have to think back. What did I do? Okay. Just do it right away. Sounds good. And then the last thing I would do would be to divide both sides by 5. So I'm going to be left with 6 equals x. And that would be depot. Now, it said solve. We solve for x. Is there any reason for x to be on the other side? No, not necessarily. No, if you if you're like a you want to, you could switch it around. What allows us to switch it around? Ooh, let me think. Is that that symmetric property? It is. Okay. Symmetric just allows you to rewrite, and this is not something you have to do on this one. Later on, we'll have to worry about it. Okay. The next one, Mrs. Palermo, go ahead and help me through this one. Okay. What would you, we know that we always want to start every proof. We need a reason for every step, including the one we're starting with. So this is just given to us. What right. would you do, though, first to help you solve? Well, I see on the left side, there's some terms that are like, mm -hmm. and on the right side, too. So I'm going to, is there a reason or you combine like terms? We can combine like terms, absolutely. And that's a reason. That is a property. We didn't necessarily talk about it, but that is a property that we could talk about, or we can use. Um, with algebra, so what would you end up with? 10x minus 3 equals 42. Now, we could write out the words combine like terms. I'm also okay with using CLT. It's just my Sounds acronym good for that. to me. Combine like terms. And another, I think another reason that is acceptable is if you said simplify because you're kind of, in a sense, simplifying that particular side. But sure. I'm I'm kind of a big fan of CLT. I like CLT it's, as well. It's a lot shorter. Exactly. <laughs> All right. What would you, right, looking at what we have now, what would you do next? I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Okay. So, so you would have 10x equals 45, and I'm going to put APO as my reason. Lovely. Okay. And for the last step? I'm going to divide by 10 on each side. So x would equal? Um, 4.5 you could say, you could say 9, nine halves, 
But since it's an exact decimal, I'm good, good with that. So depot. Love it. Perfect. Yeah, when you have that exact decimal, you're perfectly fine just leaving it like And that. notice how each of these algebraic proofs, you start with the original equation that's your given, and notice your ending when you find x. Right. All right, next one. Looks kind of oh, complicated, boy. but we can figure this one out. So given, I'm going to go ahead and start there. That's what's given. First step. All right, I see lots of grouping symbols here, and I see brackets with parentheses inside, and I remember back when we did algebra last year that we have to work from the inmost outward. Okay. So the first thing that I would do is I would distribute that negative 2. To all that, right? To all of that. But could I also in the same step distribute the 3? I think so. Because it's all distribution, right? Yeah. As long as it has the same reason, we can put it all together. All right, so I'm going to write down 6. You can leave those brackets or you could change it to parentheses, whatever you're comfortable with. As long as and it's a grouping symbol. X. Yeah. So then a negative 4X. And a negative 6, and still my positive 1, yeah. And then over there, I'm going to have a 15 and a 30, no, 18, sorry, I'm looking at my 5. 18x uh, plus x equals 0. And you use distribute it, so D-I-S-T. Okay. Dist. Dist. I dist it. All right, now I, I would like to combine those like terms before I start distributing more. Is that okay? okay? That's fine. It, and like... You could also distribute. It's up to you, whatever sure. you're comfortable with. I feel like, there. yeah, there's a couple ways we could do this. I'm going to go ahead and say I still am going to take a 6 times the quantity. Okay. But now I want to call that just a negative 3x and a negative 5. And can I go ahead and, while I'm at it, combine the like terms on the outside? Of course you can. Okay, because it's all combining like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and call that a 19x, yeah. So CLT. CLT, combined like terms. All right, now I want to distribute that 6. So negative 18x. Yep. And minus, then minus 30. 30. Okay, and that again is distribution. Oh. And one thing to notice, guys, is that we're not combining a whole lot of steps. This this one we did two distributing in different spots because we use the same reason. We can't really distribute and combine in the same step because they have two different reasons. So you want to always keep separate steps. And that's really okay. huge when we get to um, out ge geometric proofs. We don't want to have combined too many steps if they have different reasons. If they have the same reason, then we could pop talk about combining steps. Okay, that makes sense. And then we want to go ahead and combine some more like terms here. So we're going to have a total of 1x and a total of a negative 15 equals r0. Combine so like combine terms, so CLT. Again. And the last thing we need to do is move that negative 15 over to the other side. So by adding 15, I'm left with x is 15, and that's APO. And you're done because we got solved for x. All right. All right, one more. One more. All right, this right here is the Celsius formula. If you have a temperature in Fahrenheit, this will allow you to turn it into a temperature in Celsius. What we want to do is we want to solve this equation for F. So we want to come up with a Fahrenheit formula. We want to get the F by itself. Now, of course, this is our given information. How in the world am I going to go about getting this F by itself in this problem, Mrs. Palermo? Well, I'm thinking of a couple ways about doing this. There's lots of different ways. But one initial thought, which I think some of you are probably thinking, is that there's parentheses, so distributing maybe. But then I'm like, well, I'm distributing a fraction, and I don't necessarily love that idea. Okay. So I'm trying to think of another option. Um, another option is I could eliminate the fractions that we talked about, um, but then I would still have to distribute. Um, a way that I'm thinking, this is kind of one that might be out there for some of you, but it's the quickest way, is if I want to get rid of that 5 ninths, a way of doing that is multiply by its reciprocal. Oh, yeah, you're so right. So could I multiply each side by 9 fifths? I'm just going to write the steps so that way you guys can see that. And I'm not going to actually, yeah, I like that. I'm not actually going to multiply inside the parentheses, but when I multiply 9 fifths, that gets rid of the 5 ninths because, on that right side. Yeah, because 5 ninths times 9 fifths is just 1. Exactly. So now I'm left with 9 fifths C on one side equals F minus 32, and since I multiplied each side, it'd be input, which we haven't really used, but
but it's a, obviously a property that works. Yeah, and you typically use MPO when you're trying to clear a fraction okay. of some sort. Now, you made a good point that you could have just multiplied both sides by 9 to clear the fraction, uh-huh. and then you could have distributed the 5, and then you could have divided every, added, you know, it would have divided. just added more steps. Yeah. But that definitely works too if you guys, if this is confusing. But this works great when there's just that one fraction to clear, you can multiply by its reciprocal. And guys, one thing to hit on what Ms. Hoker was saying is that we're never going to grade you on, all right, did you get your proof done quicker or, you know, than somebody or you took more steps. As long as you do the proof in a logical order, you have support with your reasons, that's perfectly fine. Yep. All right, next okay. step would We're be trying to add get the by itself. 32. Add 32. So what's this going to look like? It'd be 9 fifths C plus 32 equals F. And so that would be APO. And since I got F by itself, I am done. We're done.